product that we chose to use on our workshop floor is a product called XTech Eurofloor HT. The product was specifically designed because of its resistance to abrasion and its resistance to thermal shock, resistance to um, chemical wear and those types of, of environments that you would normally find in a workshop floor. It's quite important to remember that this is a specialised flooring system. It's not a DIY type of floor. It's, it's a product that, that is used for a functional floor. It's, it's applied by people who are trained, by people who have had experience in laying these types of floors. So what generally would happen is the concrete itself, your substrate on the concrete floor, would need to be checked and made sure that the substrate is of a quality that can handle a system like this on top of it. So the integrity of the substrate is checked first of all. If that's all fine, what happens is the substrate gets scarified or sanded down to expose the aggregate and the concrete. You would then put a primer down, an epoxy primer. Once the epoxy primer is down, you would sprinkle um, some coarse grit just to give you some grip. You would sprinkle coarse grit into the priming system and then this particular Eurofloor HT or CS or the TF product gets applied over it. It's a product which is, um, which is applied in a three-part system. There's a base, there's a hardener and there's a, a filler component. When the three of them are mixed together and, and mixed to a homogeneous finish and then applied onto the floor. Once they're poured on the floor, obviously the self-leveling version of the product will start to level itself. It's helped with, by means of a rake to spread the product a little bit. And then what might happen is you tend to find a lot of outgassing of air in the substrate, which causes little bubbles to come to the surface. So one of the applicators would be walking up and down with spiked shoes on and he would be rolling the floor with a spiked roller to encourage all the air bubbles that might have built up during the, the mixing process to encourage those bubbles to surface to get out of the actual system so that they don't appear once the product is already started to set. The process is probably about a three day process whereby the surface preparation of the concrete substrate would take place on the first day, the um, priming of the surface on the second day and the application of the final finish on the third day. The system is a seamless system, it's absolutely seamless which means that the product can be poured for as far as you need to pour it, however um, any existing joints, whether they be structural or, or um, aesthetic, whatever joints you might have in the background in your concrete substrate, those were put there for a reason in the first place. So they need to be carried through the system. The only maintenance as far as, uh, as, far as this particular system is concerned is any, any destructive damage that's taken place. For whatever reason, those small areas need to be rebuilt up again and, and repaired as soon as possible. The compressive strength of a normal concrete floor hovers around 30 MPa. The compressive strength of this particular product is in the region of 65 MPa. So it's a very, very hard, tough and durable surface that you're applying.